In my last video, I talked about how to go from having a dream to working on that dream. I went over three things that helped me stop wishing and start doing. First, I changed my relationship with my thoughts. And then I set a timeline and a daily practice. And third, and most importantly, I aim to enjoy myself every step of the way. Because the worst thing is having a goal, achieving it, and realizing you put off your happiness only to feel the same at the finish line. Now, in this video, I'll be taking you along the ride on the first major step of my racing journey. That's right, I'm going to racing school. Guys, we made it to Palm Beach. Tomorrow is my first day of racing school, the three-day school at Bertel Roos at Palm Beach International Raceway. I'm super excited, I'm so pumped. It's great to be back here in beautiful Palm Beach with my lovely wife. Uh, about to have a blast and take you guys along for the ride. One of my first weekly goals was to research and decide on what big decisions I needed to make. I didn't know much of anything in terms of how to get into racing, so my goal was to figure out what decision I needed to make first. After I made the decision to attend racing school, I then spent my secondly weekly goal figuring out what racing school to attend. So I researched as many as I could, made pros and cons lists, really tried to figure out, again, what worked for me as an individual. Because there's tons of schools and I can go into depth into those schools in another future video. But the reason I chose this one was for a number of factors, but it just came down to the timing, uh, the price, and just other things. So after I did that, I chose my school. I then spent my third and fourth weekly goals and daily practices getting ready for the school. So did I need equipment? Were there things that I could practice, books I could read, videos I could watch? All kinds of stuff to immerse myself to better prepare me for and set, me, set myself up for success at the school. So I spent my daily morning practice researching what decisions needed to be made, what avenues into racing there were, and most importantly, which ones aligned with my life situation the best. Because as I found out quickly, there are tons of ways to get into racing. And really, it's about what works for you as an individual with your life circumstances. For me, the best first step was racing school. Guys, as a side note, one of my favorite things to do in Palm Beach is rent bicycles with my wife. We did this on our honeymoon and we just ride around the island of Palm Beach. It's absolutely beautiful. The houses are unreal. The landscaping is crazy, super well manicured, and just everything is so nice. It just, oh, I love it. I mean, these houses are just incredible. They're so nice. I gotta be careful because there's cars coming. But just take a look at this. I mean, these bushes. What even are those bushes? I don't know, but I like them.
Good morning. Day one, 6.30 a.m., dressed and ready to go. My wife and I are about to head to our favorite coffee shop to get some coffee, fuel up for the day, and then hit the track. Fun fact, my wife and I discovered this coffee shop on our honeymoon. It's called Johan's Joe. We ended up going here pretty much every day. And we're finally back in Palm Beach, so gotta hit it up, of course. <laughs> Guys, I assume these are going to be the race cars that we're driving because these are the only ones in sight. Wow, this is crazy. As of now, there's only three people here. Well, two of us here, three people on the sign up sheet. So it may just be three of us for three days, which could be good because that would mean probably a lot more one on one instruction. Um, wow, crazy. Look at all these parts. All right. See you guys soon. All right guys, I got fitted for my helmet and my suit. Everything's feeling pretty good. We are out here at the track and I'm super excited. Vision should be two to three seconds ahead of what you can do with your hands and feet next. You can always lead the car with your eyes. So I'm not going to be looking at this cone for long. I'm going to start looking over there. Yeehaw! <laughs> so it's seat of the pants feel. That's crazy because it feels like, you know, we're doing a lot faster, like actually sliding it. Yeah, yeah. That's why nine to three works. Is right, you always right, know right. when the wheel's straight. And I, I let the wheel slide a little bit yeah. and shuffle a little bit, so I do a combination right. of, of you know more high performance driving habits. Good recovery there. Good quick hands. And if you have motion sickness, do not throw up on the people in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Just say something. We'll pull over. Doing well. So Natalie was saying you went spent a lot of time at K1, which I've actually yeah, not I mean, been to. I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the guy that see how you're fishtailing. You're, you're way behind the car. Okay. So we'll come together and open up. Stop the pedals there. Which yeah, but you you were mistiming yeah. your correction okay. and recovery okay. and not really pausing. Right. So when cars fishtail, you've just started the process too late. Hard to catch up, as you just saw. Yep. And males with testosterone and ego say, "I got it, I got it, I got it." Well, I don't have it. Yep. And some of them get all. All right, guys. Day one is halfway complete. 
We're uh, breaking for lunch right now, and let me just tell you, it's been kind of a humbling experience. We haven't even been in the race cars yet. Um, there's just, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. There's so much to take into account. Um, we started off the day in a classroom setting talking about fear, because let's face it, driving a race car is scary. Uh, you're driving at the limit, you're waste, racing other people. Um, there's nothing kind of, uh, it's a very scary thing, it can be. So if you're not scared, you're lying to yourself, and you're lying to other drivers. So this first session in the classroom was all about managing the fear. And to be honest, even in the few hours I've been here, there's kind of a lot of parallels with racing and life. Um, it's not about having no fear, it's about how you manage the fear and still get on with things. So we talked about fear, we talked about your sense of control in the race car and how things, um, you may think you're fully in control, but you're not. There are still things out of your control, things can break, uh, weather, all kinds of things. And then we got into what's called the slide cars, which are really cool. Those uh, basically simulate a drift. So the, the rear end of the car kicks out and it uh, begins to oversteer. So that means the, basically you're, you're drifting around the corner and you need to correct it. And it's all about car control, how to handle that at a, at a slower speed. Um, very interesting cars. It's kind of like you're driving on ice uh, or snow. And then we got into some regular sedans <clears throat> and did some uh, laps around the racetrack, both as passengers to get, kind of get familiar with the racing line, the different corners, the braking points, all that. And then we got into the, uh, the cars, the driving, you know, we, we drove the cars. Uh, and it's just a lot. It's a lot to uh, remember, to take into account. There's so many subtle techniques that are happening in a race car, or that should be happening, in order for you to drive fast at the limit. And it's, it's nothing like street driving. I mean, there's so much more going on, and it's tough. It's been, it's been challenging, but little by little, kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Um, but it's only day one, and it's lunchtime, and we're going to be getting into the race cars this afternoon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Session's complete. I feel good. I got up to some good speeds, but it's not all about speed today. It's about uh, technique. Two of my biggest things I need to work on. I'm coming in too fast to the corners, and so that's sacrificing my exit speed. So you come Photo bomb! Oh shit! <laughs> Video bomb. I'm documenting it. So coming in too fast, sacrificing my exit speed, uh, and I need to blip the throttle more on the downshifts. Otherwise, it's great fun. Little technique, just tighten the seat up. Put it through this, this over this little pole. Pull, get some leverage. Oops. <laughs> Day one, round two, I'm gonna focus on my entry speed so I can get quicker exit speed. And braking harder, because these brakes stop a lot. All right.
All right, day one is a wrap, and wow, that was a lot. I'm looking at my wife here. We were just debriefing in the car. It's interesting because driving a race car, there's a lot of parallels between life and race car driving. Uh, the opening session, I mentioned to you guys before, but like we talked about fear and how it's all about managing your fear, not trying to get rid of it. And what's interesting with racing is there's such a small, such a fine line of getting it right and everything outside of that line is a mistake. And so everything from your throttle input to your braking input, you know, how much you brake, where you brake, downshifting at the right time, turning in at the right time, carrying the right speed through the corners, hitting the apexes, hitting the right line throughout the corner, you know, and if you make a small mistake, recovering from that mistake. How do you correct the mistake and still stay fast? And then exiting the corner at the right speed, hitting the gears at the right time. There's such a small, tiny, kind of fraction of, of uh, correctness that you're trying to, uh, you know, fraction of precision that you're trying to hit throughout a lap, let alone an entire race. Um, and that's without any other cars on the road. Throw in, you know, a whole field of race cars and now that's, that's racing. So incredibly difficult to, to get everything right. And so I made a lot of mistakes, but luckily my mistakes were consistent as I mentioned before, I'm coming in, carrying too much speed into the corners and that is throwing off my line and therefore I'm exiting the corners a lot slower. And the priority is your corner exit speed because you want to minimize the time you spend between corners. And so if there's a long straightaway and you enter the corner going into that straightaway too fast, you're going to have to slow down, correct it, and now you're exiting a long straightaway at a much slower speed and the cars behind you are gonna lap you or go in front of you. So anyways, a lot I learned, a lot to work on and think about tonight, but definitely kind of drinking from a fire hose and I'm gonna spend some time just processing it, what I can do better, trying to hit my marks better, turn in at the right point, not carry so much speed in. Um, but overall, I was feeling really good in the car. To be honest, I felt at home. Um, it's a feeling that I've wanted to feel for a while, so I felt right right where I wanted to be. I just need to uh, minimize and, and kind of correct a few things. But anyways, we're gonna get some dinner tonight, uh, do some more debriefing, and that's a wrap. I'll see you guys for day two. Good morning, we're back at Johann's Joe for day two, fueling up for the second day at the track where my main goals obviously are to continue to learn, continue to enjoy myself, but specifically on track, to enter the corners at lower speed so I can get a better exit and also just work on braking harder harder um, and in a shorter distance but that's it that's the goals for day two and we're about to hit the track see you soon all right supposedly there's an alligator so we're gonna take a look here is an alligator or a crocodile all right take a look Hello, good morning he's looking right there Obviously, the guys that maintenance wow. out here must feed them if they're not supposed they to. They can come on land, huh? Yeah, he'd probably crawl up <laughs> here if he wanted to. Shit. <laughs> that would be not good. <laughs>
right, just finished up the first race car session of the day on day two. Um, I was feeling quick, really good, until I was a little bit too quick, again, too fast into a corner, and I spun out. Um, no crash, luckily, and I got the car started again, which was fine, but it uh, kind of sucks to, to spin out, have to come in, and uh, basically, I need to just work harder and smarter at certain corners. I'm having a lot of fun, but maybe a little too much fun, and I need to be really deliberate about getting the corners right. Anyways, that's the afternoon update. Three more sessions to go. Right, guys day two is a wrap and it's been quite the day we had four sessions on track one in the morning before lunch uh, three after lunch and overall I think I'm getting more comfortable in the car well I feel more comfortable in the car although it's just there's so many things to learn and you're basically going from a novice to um, you know as far as you can get in three days and it's just like such a tight compressed schedule um, to learn so much. So I'm doing my best. It's sometimes hard to know what I'm getting better at and what I'm not. Sometimes it's clear. Um, you kind of feel like you master a corner, but then you screw it up the next time. And then <clears throat> it kind of gets you down. So this morning I had a little bit of a spin, um, but this afternoon I was really deliberate on my entry speed and I actually improved there. Um, so I was really making an effort to break as hard as I could. And uh, after the day, honestly, my feet in the second or the third and fourth sessions, my feet were getting numb from hitting the brake pedal so hard because there's really only a tiny bit of travel and it's, it's extremely firm. It's really nothing like a street car. So I got better. Um, and then the classroom session, in addition to the track session, was all about de developing a racing line. So first starting with a basic racing line, how to develop that, looking at track maps, looking at videos of the track, doing a track walk, and just kind of getting that basic line down, geometric line, and then tra practicing it, whether it's in a simulator or if you can get on the track. And then from there, you can kind of play with that and develop an advanced line. Uh, and that is basically the basic line uh, altered to take, in, to, to take certain things into, into account, like camber um, is the track does it bank one way or another um, the different curbing can you use certain curbs versus can you use other curbs and how far up the curbs can you go and where do you want to hit them um, <clears throat> other things like um, any kind of anomalies in the track so if they just paved an area does it sit a little lower or higher are there bumps in the track things like that so all, all types of uh, conditions that would make you alter your basic line to give you an ultimately faster lap it may sacrifice you in certain segments of the track, but you're looking for overall lap time, not just certain segments. So that's a wrap on day two. Uh, tomorrow we have five sessions in the race cars, and we're gonna be working on different braking techniques. Um, <clears throat> and so we'll see what we can learn tomorrow and finish off with a great day. I'll see you guys on the track. Oh, by the way, one of the participants, Lisa, who works at the track, uh, got us these Palm Beach International Raceway shirts. So shout out to Lisa. Thank you for the shirts. Morning, it's day three, you guessed it. Got our Johans Joe, we're ready to go, hit the track, and just focus on having a good time. Five sessions today on track, and really just wanna tidy up, get more consistent laps, uh, be more precise and deliberate around the corners, and have a great time. I'll see you guys later. Okay, we're doing a track walk, if you couldn't tell, and we are looking at the different um, elevation changes, the camber, which is the way the track is banking, the corners, the curbing, just trying to get an up-close and different view of the track um, than when we're in the race car. It's, you'd be surprised at how different it is when you're actually on track. 
For example, this pavement has seashells in it because they were in Florida. Just about to the leftmost edge of the grandstand that's looking into turn two. Okay, kind of want to aim for that. So I'm kind of coming out of this corner mid track and kind of diagonal toward turn two. Okay, the reason being, look at all the camber in turn two. I have a decent amount of camber.
That's a wrap on day three of the Berto Roos Racing School. I figured this was a good spot to end it. Literally, there's a McLaren Center right here. They're about to do a track day event, a night event at Palm Beach International Raceway with some pretty sick race cars. A lot of Porsches, 911s, McLarens, uh, and cool looking race cars. Anyways, uh, I had an amazing time. <clears throat> First of all, thank you to the instructors, everybody who helped us. We um, learned a ton, or we were told, and given a lot more information than we could learn, but still, I hope I tried to absorb as much as possible, and I had a great time. Um, I'm feeling good, but also feeling, um, I don't know if discouraged is the right word, but reminded of just how hard it is to race a car, to drive a car at the limit. Um, remember, <clears throat> you're not just driving it. The whole point is to drive it as fast as you can around the track, lap after lap, and that's extremely difficult. But I did my best, and I can't wait for what's next. I don't know what's next, but stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a long one, but a super one fun one to film. And that's about it. So I will see you guys on the next one.